Well, there's quite a revolution taking place in South Africa at the moment, and it involves South Africa's favorite beverage, beer. But unlike the big com uh, name commercial brands, this revolution captures the spirit of entrepreneurship and celebrates creative spirit. In the cover, cover story this week, Finweek looked at the craft beer industry and the number of opportunities that it now presents themselves. Finweek Company's editor, Garth Tennyson, joins us to take a look at that. We'll also be uh, speaking to Brendan Watchman from Copper Lake Breweries and Jason Cedarwell founder of Craft Liquor Merchants. Welcome to you all. Uh, yes, I suppose a, a nice topic as we edge into the weekend. So why did you decide to go as this, with this as your cover story? Go on, beer. I mean, come on, you, there's nothing better than beer at the moment. I mean, I think it's coming into summer. I think that it, it's one of those things that's just, it's a South African thing. We love our beer. And mm -hmm. I think that, you know, we, we looked at it a couple of months back, so we, we'd noticed a little trend happening in South Africa, specifically Joburg and Cape Town, where you're having these little craft beer festivals popping up, and they were on everybody's radar. And Garth, I, I think he maybe took the mickey out of it a little bit because he's managed to wheedle his way into a, 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 his own little wine route or craft beer route around the country. <laughs> but uh, he went out there and he went and he actually looked at the state of craft beer in South Africa. And I think what was really interesting about this particular story was it actually captures the spirit of entrepreneurship. I think, you know, often you see all the big corporates replicating brand after brand. Uh, there's nothing unique about them. There's no real celebration of creativity, entrepreneurial spirit. And I think, you know, we often we blame that we don't actually actually d uh, generate the entrepreneurial interest in, in, in initiatives like this. Yeah. And I think craft be brewing, just you know, looking at God's story, he's managed to unpack something that really cool that's happening around South Africa at the moment. It's an interesting trend worldwide. And you pointed out the fact that in the States last year, beer, vo beer volumes uh, dipped by 1.3% and the craft beer industry grew by 13%. Mm. Is that the same case in South Africa? Well, it's difficult to get figures in South Africa because the, the industry is quite fragmented. Um, and it, in the US they have a very organized Brewers Association which ha has very accurate and reliable stats on the various um, forms of, of, uh, of beer, craft beer versus in, let's call it mass produced beer. Um, it, to give you an idea, in, in South Africa um, I approached SAB Miller and I said to them what do you think um, is the total volume uh, being produced by craft brewers annually? And they gave me a figure of 1.3 million to 1.8 million liters, which is literally a drop in the ocean um, f for them. But I did a sort of back of the envelope calculation based on some of the volumes I was given um, by, by a lot of the guys that we spoke to. And I estimate that it's probably closer to, to 3 million liters. So mm -hmm. the point is, is it's very hard to, to tell exactly what is going on in the craft uh, brewing industry and, and drill down into the detail. But one thing I can tell you is everyone we spoke to just spoke about growth, growth, growth. There, there's an appetite out there for new organic, um, you know, handmade beer, if I can put it that way. Yeah, we talk, we talk about artisanal beer market in, in South Africa. Um, of course, it's trendy. It, it seemingly started in Cape Town, uh, the trendsetters of South Africa, many say. Um, Brendan, welcome to the show. Tell us a little bit about, about Copper Lake. Uh, and is this, is this about passion or is it about profits? Well, it's our brewery started about eight months ago and uh, we've been going from strength to strength. The, uh, there's a huge demand at the moment. It is a very trendy product to have. Um, the, um, don't be fooled into thinking that it's an easy undertaking. Um, it's capital intensive and it's a hell of a lot of hard work, but it is also a lot of fun. And the best part about being a brewer is if you come home sober, your wife thinks you haven't been working. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, I suppose that, that is a, you know, an issue um, probably for some, but uh, when we're talking about um, distribution, there's, uh, some, some are saying SAB is a good thing for the market. They dominate the market, 90% of the local markets. What are your views on that? Well, if you look at SAB, I mean, their beer is available in every little corner and every tiny little town in this country, and that's a mammoth undertaking. Logistics is probably the biggest thing, even... Um, uh, it's more difficult than actually making a good beer is to get it out there and get it available to people. Marketing as well. Um, we go uh, solely through um, social media at the, at the moment. Mm -hmm. and We've got quite a big following of people on our Facebook site, um, which is working well for us. And at this stage, it's really, it's growing because there is very little competition at the moment. Yeah. And Jason, of course, yes. that's where your business comes in. Absolutely. You saw an opportunity. Yes. You spent a bit of time in Cape Town. Uh, you were doing your friends a favor yep. by bringing some of the beers uh, to Joburg. And then, of course, a business boot. Yes. So, I mean, that's pretty much exactly how it started. I mean, it was literally I stumbled upon it by chance. Um, it started off as a hobby, uh, which is pretty much still that. Um, 
you know, and just spending time down in Cape Town where this kind of this micro brewing, you know, beer movement was, um, I was just absolutely drawn to it. Um, you know, you started off by saying, you know, it's our passionate drink. And, you know, there's a story behind it. And I think that, you know, for me, this entire industry is built on passion. And that's exactly what it is. You know, what Brennan's doing, what we are doing. We're not at that scale now where it's, where it's kind of making sense for us right now, but it's those who kind of get in now. And that's mm. exactly what, what we've done. You know, being able to bring beer to the market, again, what the likes of Brennan and, you know, and that are doing, it's just so rewarding to see the growth that we're seeing and the growth that Brennan and them are seeing as it's kind of started off at just a single market in Johannesburg, it's now you know, in restaurants, it's in bars, um, and we're literally just going from strength to strength. When it comes to the, the, the outlook, what is, your, what is the sense you've got from the breweries you spoke to? I mean, are, are they looking to increase their capacity? Virtually everyone we spoke to is either in the process of expanding their, their microbrewery or they have plans to do so. Um, and the, the word that you know, on, on everyone's lips is explosion. It's about to explode. Um, in the US and, and apparently in Australia, craft brewing is, is huge and, and, and there's a huge following um, amongst consumers who go out there looking for specific craft beers and, and want to try new and new, uh, new beers all the time. Um, and just to touch on what Mark said, yes, South Africans love beer. Um, but I was speaking to Steve Gilroy, who runs the Gilroy uh, Brew Pub in, in Mulder's Drift, and he said to me, South Africans don't have a beer culture, we have a light lager culture. And I think that pretty much summed it up. Yeah. Yes, we like beer, but we like to drink the same beer all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we have this sort of parochial mentality of, I will drink what my father drank, or I will drink what the guys at university drank. And again, and, you know, I spoke to the Triggerfish Brewer, and he says, why is it like that? People don't, you don't have people who only drink Zona Blum, Sauvignon Blanc and nothing else. They'll try different wines all the time. Mm. Um, why should it be any different for beer? Uh, very quickly, um, you know, we've, we've got so little time, but what, what are your views on the outlook for the industry? No, they're extremely positive. And um, just to reinforce what he said, uh, when we built our brewery, we spent extra time and extra money in making uh, quite a large capacity because I went to every one of the microbrewers at the time and asked them the same question and all the answers were the same. And their biggest problem was that they couldn't produce enough beer, which is a fantastic problem to have, and uh, I think this industry is going to do very well. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, distribution-wise, that's re really where you play, and exactly. you see a huge opportunity there. Absolutely. And, it's, you know, it's really, it's really, really going to go from uh, strength, strength to strength. You know, we started off on a very small scale. Within literally a couple of months, we've literally quadrupled that scale. Um, so I think, you know, the word, the word explosion is a pretty you know, it's a pretty good way to put it. I think the next two years, this landscape is going to be completely, completely different. We're still about 10 years behind the US. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're still s kind of s s scratching the surface. But, yeah. Um, yeah, and it tastes good. It, it yes. does, it definitely does taste good. So you are paying uh, for quality.